Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. And so you may ask, what are the gaming drags today? I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Dawn Chorus Miko's Path. So before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel, get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you are up and let's go. Alright. <clears throat> First day of August, like a sweet caramel, sticky and delicious. The color of the late summer sun. The air carries the smell of apples, and I wish I was out there, running through the fields. Everything seems still in the noon heat. A lonely call resounds from outside. A blackbird cuts across the sky, and my thoughts travel with it, far beyond these four walls and the teacher's monotonous voice. And I wonder, what are a bird's thoughts like? They have a language they turn they think in, or maybe only images, or something entirely different, incomprehensible for us, earthbound creatures. How does it feel to live like them? My thoughts snap back to here and now when I notice a person sitting in the second row, focusing on drawing in his notebook. Miko. He introduced himself to the class, but we haven't talked yet. I haven't seen him talk with anyone, actually. He smiles to himself while drawing, a smile of genuine happiness. I like drawing, too. Maybe if I asked, he could let me join him later. <clears throat> with a photographic precision, the scene comes together into a whole, like a snapshot or a self-contained, tiny, perfect world. Dry air in the room, the sound of chalk scraping against the board. The end of summer sunlight flooding the room, silhouettes of leaves dancing on the classroom wall. And Miko smiling to himself, a glint in his eye. An earbud in one ear, hidden in fur, cable under my t-shirt. I'm listening to I'm listening to to Moose to Moose Kes, Keskin, Moose Keskatalo's soft crooning, so fitting here. It sounds like the trees, leaves dancing in slow waltz in the summer breeze. It sounds like the flakes dotting the land here like spots on a leopard. And it sounds like this classroom, bathed in the golden sun, drowsy and lethargic. Class ends. Everyone hurries to the door, pouring into the corridor for the break. But he stays behind, still drawing. So I stay at my desk, too. He doesn't notice me, engrossed in his own world. So after a while, I stand up and approach him. Hey! I'm thinking of going to film school. It'd be cool if we both applied, though. Uh, we could collaborate on stuff, make music videos. Hey, don't laugh. I'm serious. You have the silliest ideas sometimes. I know, but it would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. Oh. The train tracks carry on forward, unused and overgrown with grass and weeds. Nature spreads explosively over what once was hers, entropy devouring order. It stretches from an abandoned sawmill next to our school into the unknown. The furthest, furthest we've gone along, we've gone along it was half an hour north, past an abandoned radio tower into the forest. A walk balancing on one rail, arms outstretched, and Miko on another, a bit ahead. I think that's what I'd like to do in life the most, make music videos. I have a lot of ideas already, just no camera. You could even try recording something to your music. That'd be fun. If I start making any, I wouldn't call my not my cocking around with synths making music. Did you find the files from the last time we tried filming, by the way? No, I'm afraid they're lost forever. I think a value was lost, though. Do you remember how the filming went? It was a good laugh. I'd like to remember. <clears throat> maybe repeat that, maybe repeat that even? I'm visiting you this weekend. How about we start with something new? We can try. Why not? And, hmm, how about art school? So you know, a lot of time. Hmm, how about art school, then? I'm not sure if I'm cut out for that. Silence falls between us. Miko is suddenly looking down, lost in thoughts. So, were you serious when you said you want to move out of the country? Yeah, I definitely want to move out of here. Move somewhere where there's more people, more lights, more life, more everything. It doesn't make, it doesn't make that much of a difference if I stay in the country or not, does it? I don't think I'd move too far away. Norway, maybe? I got a calendar with photos from Norway. It's so pretty there. Miko loses his balance and I lean forward, catching his paw before he falls. Uh, thanks. So, what do you want to do? He sighs, looking up beyond the forest, staring into the sun. I don't know yet. Thinking of the future frightens me. It feels like a sea, an ocean of possibilities and paths. It could be so many different things. To take one path and commit to it, shutting, shutting myself from everything else. Could I ever live a life like that? But it happens anyway. 
One cannot choose. With free will, everything is a choice. Even giving up. But it would be nice to stay together. Maybe we could go to the same uni, and then... I don't know. It's hard to know. I don't know either, but I can't imagine us parting ways. Yeah. My paw brushes through dense fur with slow, comforting strokes. How can I let things go like this? Now, when I'm older and my perspective is different, it all feels stupid. What happened to us? Why do I tell him today at the hill? What do I tell him today at the hill? I dread this so much. I just got him back and now I risk losing him again. I fucked every... I fucked everything up so bad. We both did, didn't we? But things will get better, you'll see. Dropping out is not the end of the world. For me it kind of is. You know, I feel like I was building a house of cards and now it's just big enough to collapse under the lightest blow. You have a chance to fix stuff. Me? Not so much. The end can also be a beginning. You don't have to fix stuff. If you reach a dead end, it's okay to take a few steps back, or many, and try something else. I mean, it's clear that this is not for you. Is there anything else you'd like to do? It doesn't have to be anything big, just a vision of a future where you're happy. There you go. Quarter time. I thought I'd be happy when I finished my studies and got a job. Got a good job. But you could be happy now, doing what you like doing. Happiness is not something you build over time through hard work. Spending life chasing some vague vision of who you will be. You could just try to be happy now. It's a lot coming from me, but listening to Bjorn lamenting about his studies, his failed exams, his future plans, seem all sad like this. There's something positive he said about his life. There's nothing positive he said about his life, and it hurts to listen to. The snow guard. That writer? What about him? It was incredible to meet him. Surreal, even. He's a great writer, you know. I got such a huge kick of motivation just being there and listening to him. I asked him, I asked him if I could be a writer too. He said that I already am a writer if I want to be one. A writer? That's not an easy path, but maybe it is a path for you. If it would make you happy, then you definitely should try. Yeah, maybe. Have you ever written anything? A bit. Nothing I'd, I'd showed anyone else yet. It's still a beginning. You have a start somewhere. I thought anyone but some literary geniuses were good when they first started. Yeah, I'll have to think of my living situation first, though. The bear sighs and rests his head on his head on my heavy his heavy head on my shoulder. His eyes bleak as a rainy sky. I'm not passing this semester. I have two more months of living in the dormitory, and then I have to look for something else. Don't think about it today. A failed exam is enough woe for one evening. For now, think that it's finally over. You're free to do whatever your soul desires. Bjorn falls silent. His snouts, his snout, snout resting on my chest. I resume petting him, making long strokes, starting behind the ear, then continuing downwards under the hoodie, scratching at his neck. Poor bear, years of hard work and all for nothing down the drain. But judging by what he told me, it'd be way worse if he continued to put even more years into something he doesn't want to do. Miko? My thoughts circle back to him, the north star on my Sonoma night sky. He used to pet him like that. Not often, we tried that when he was visiting me at my place in winter and stayed up until late in the night, and then somehow stopped after that. I mean, it felt too awkward. If everything goes right, tonight I could be laying with, laying like that with Miko instead. But it's still nice being here with Bjorn, despite our circumstances. I missed physical closeness so much. Thanks, you, thanks for coming. If, if not for you all, I'd still be panicking. I thought I'd check up on you. I didn't buy the story with you suddenly feeling unwell. Sorry. I kind of was. Thank you, though. It's much appreciated. I hope I helped, too, at least a bit. He did. I really needed someone to talk to. By the way, I think they'll be serving supper soon. Are you going? Yeah, I think I'll go, but I need a moment first, and I don't think I'll stay for the film. I'm in more of the mood for a walk. Sure thing. If you'd like to stay, I'm sure Miko wouldn't mind if you sat with us. There you go. Water time. Thank you. Bjorn East leans back, sitting down on the bed next to me, a smile returning to his face. So, what are you going to tell Miko? Everything he will ask about. And I will tell him that I had feelings for him. And I will apologize. Well, good luck, holding my thumbs. Not crossing your fingers? Not in Polish. I still have some linguistic oddities from my parents. I sigh and look outside. Hopefully the film puts us in a good mood before we talk. All the furniture in the cafeteria got rearranged for the film. 
tables are lined up at the walls, our food waiting on one of them. Miko is already there when I enter, sitting on one of the blankets strewn across the floor, among other students' pairs and groups and lone figures. I stop in my tracks. How delicate and gentle he looks, paws folded on his legs, eyes down, eyes cast downwards, like a piece of paper bending in the wind, almost. An urge to protect him rises in me, but against what? I've hurt him myself in the past. I flinch, something clicking inside my head, but I shake off the unpleasant thought and sit down quickly next to the wolf, gently tapping his shoulder to get his attention when he doesn't react. Carvin! Hey, have you eaten it already? Oh, no, I was waiting for you. I'll grab his two plates then. I shoot him a smile, get up and walk away to the table with the food, maneuvering between the students, bumping into Coach Devin all the way. Oh, sorry. Ah, I'm sorry, it's my fault. I I'm just trying to get something to eat. Coach is rather easy to notice, that's for sure, but I was busy trying not to step on anyone, and I didn't look ahead. Are you staying for the film? Yeah, I'm with Miko sitting here. I'm grabbing us some food first. I point towards the wolf, two long ears standing tall among other heads. By the way, do you know what film we're watching? Oh, yes, uh, it's Mr. No One. Have you heard of it? Mr. No One. No, nothing comes to mind. I haven't, no. Room recommended it to me, so I thought it could be a good fit. It has Jared Bleedo in it, too. Jared Bleedo. Professor Ahn wanted to play a, cos a cosmo... Cosmogony? Cosmogony documentary. But I convinced him that with lectures in the morning, that's enough knowledge for one day, and you could do with some entertainment. Have you seen Rune, by the way? I thought he'd come for the film, but he's not hes not here yet. We're starting soon. No, unfortunately. Sorry. That's all, that's all right. I can't leave the cafeteria for now, but I'll drop him a message. Two plates in my paw, two glass bottles of, of water in another. I come back to Miko sitting down next to him. There you are. Thank you. By the way, I met Coach. I asked him about the film, and he said we're watching Mr. No One. So you know. One more time. What? Really? Why? Have you seen it? Yeah, it's quite good. Why the disbelief, then? I was just surprised. It's not very new or nor a classic and not really well known. And it's a French film. Quite long and quite slow. I glance around at the room, quickly looking for looking for Bjorn, but I can't find him. This supper looks nice, by the way. But now that he mentions that he's right. We have sandwiches again. Beetroot, horseradish, and rocket, and, and rocket on rye bread. Radish and rocket. The fuck is rocket? Plus a small slice of pie with what looks like cashew cream. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah, I could get used to it. I always wanted to try making this sort of cake. Maybe I could try once we're back. I want a slice, though. If you invite me to your dorm, then I can bring you some. Deal. Coach Devin turns off the light and walks away to a laptop, standing next to the projector, turning the film on. Still munching on my second sandwich, I press my side to Miko's. Like I used to out of sheer habit, before I even register what I'm doing. Oh, sorry. That's fine. You can stay like that. Thank you. Paths diverging and convoluting. Lives lived and lost. Time wasted, never be recovered. But it's also sweet, nevertheless. Days spent under the sun. Beautiful in their scarcity. Delicious in their aimlessness. Sacred in their leisure. You think of those you think of those of the you think of those of the days that are now way behind you, almost past the horizon, sun drenched and merry. How do you remember them? Can you recall them at all? The warmth of your parents, your favorite blanket, the breakfast your father prepared each Sunday morning, or perhaps that one dish your mother used to make that you hated with every ounce of your being, the color of drapes in your room, your feverish heat when you laid back and when you laid in bed, sick cared for with a cold, worried paw on your forehead. The friends you used to see almost every day, running around and playing without a care in the world, whispering each other's secrets in the shade under trees in the local park. I'm gonna pause it right there, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank you all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver tier patron, Cade Silverman. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you to our gold tier patron, Amr. Thank you for subscribing to our ultimate tier. You're awesome. We love you. We hope you enjoy your new icon. Anyway, if y'all want to get your name in the credits and get access to our not safe for work videos, it's as little as $5. And anyway, I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye.